Let's open our Bible in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, verses 24, 25, and 29. Verse 24 says, And to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God, in true righteousness and holiness. Verse 25, Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Verse 29, Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. A blessed day to everybody. I miss all of you, my BTC family, to the students and faculty. I hope you are doing well in this particular time. Uh, I would like to share to you uh, what the Lord has impressed in my heart to share to you this very day. And I would like to entitle today's sermon, Watch Your Words. Watch Your Words. And all of us can attest that uh, one way or another, we have not. Uh, we have been very careless with what we have said, and and it has been, you know, it has been years or even, you know, a, a season, a time where we could really wish we we didn't say those things. 
you know, we have to watch our words because they can make a difference. We, we need to watch what we say to others and what we're even saying to ourselves in a daily basis. A careless word can shape or misshape someone's reality for years to come. You see, there was a one church bulletin misused the word fake for take. And the statement came out like this. Many calls come to the church each week and we conscious, uh, conscientiously fake an interest in every one of them. Another bulletin was mistaken that word, uh, instead of using life, they put wife. And it goes like this, how to change your wife through prayer. Now, those may be funny examples, but uh, in our experience, when we don't watch our words, it's not, it's not something that is funny. And with the verses that was read to you a, a while ago, we are reminded by Apostle Paul in Ephesians that first and foremost, the reason why he has exhorted us to, to do these things because of our new identity. You see, part of our old identity is our careless, uh, in our, the way we have carelessly used our mouth. And we haven't probably never thought of that that way, but but part of spiritual maturity, part of being Christ-like is to know how to tame our tongue. And for Apostle Paul, we have to watch our words. And how do we watch our words? Number one, we have to speak truthfully. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25, we are reminded that therefore, each of you must put off falsehood. In other words, we have to get rid of any lies and deception and speak truthfully to his neighbor. For we are all members of one body. Friends, a lie is a deliberate misrepresentation of the truth. And nowadays, our society, you know, they have in a way, uh, perception is better than truth, you know. And, and sometimes lies is, is more important because we don't want to hurt somebody else. But we are reminded here that we are God's children. We are God's people. And we have to get rid of any lie. And, and by the way, any lie means all the white lies and all those, you know, uh, the lies that we usually do. And I think there are two main reasons why we sometimes we're tempted to lie. Number one, we, we, want, we want to hurt someone else. And the other one is that we want to protect ourselves from something that could have been done to us or said to us. So we, first, we want to lie because we want to hurt somebody. And second is we want to protect ourselves. But you see, even in those things, we have to stop lying. Now, those are not supposed to be done by somebody who calls himself a Christian, a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are reminded to take off what is not true in our mouths. Even we give some appreciation, you know, sometimes we give some flattery. We should be careful that it's not merely a flattery or something of a manipulation or deception. Paul reminded us that having this new kind of identity in Christ, there must no room for any deception in our lives. Paul stressed that our mutual responsibility, because we are members of the one true body of Christ, our words and actions must not be destructive to the body. Lying to each other destroys our relationship. It destroys trust. And so somebody said, it's better to say the truth that hurts rather than to say that is lie uh, to, to make that person feel good. But eventually that person, if he knows or she knows the truth, will definitely be hurt by it. I, I, I was reminded by a story, my own personal experience about lying when I was a little boy. We used to to be, you know, when when we, when I was a little boy, we were in Baguio City. My my dad was pastoring, so he he was studying there in one of the seminaries, and he was also pastoring a church. In that time, we were meeting in a hotel, and usually our Sunday school will be near the pool. So, you know, after our Sunday school, in between the services, while while were, the adults are doing their worship service, we would play in the pool and. And one day, one time, we were so, you know, we were so hyper, we were so hyperactive that we were playing with my best friend Moses. And one time, because of my naughtiness, what I, what I did is I, I gave him a push. And that's the reason why he was all soaking wet. He was in the pool, he was all soaking wet. And eventually, when somebody asked me, you know, I was a little boy at this time, and this is still very fresh in my memory. When somebody asked me what happened to Moses, 
instead of me telling the truth, I told him, you know, he slipped. You know, you know he, he stumbled instead of me telling. And, and that haunted me for many, many years that I, I, I told a lie. And, and that's why I was reminded that any form of lie, lying, whether it's to protect ourselves and not to harm others, you know, we should get rid of it because we have to watch our words. And the second thing that we should be doing is this, that we have to speak thoughtfully. First is to speak truthfully. Second is to speak thoughtfully. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 29 says, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Now, interestingly, that unwholesome word in the New Testament, in the Greek, it means rotten. It means worthless. Okay? And we don't want any rotten speech, anything that is useless, anything that is unhealthy, because it will contaminate. Whenever we speak unthoughtfully, it will have the tendency to rotten any relationship. It will have the tendency to rotten, you know, it's like the rotten fruit or the rotten fish. It will not nourish anyone. It will contaminate and it will make you sick. And if we are saying things that are improper, unwholesome, it will definitely going to have an unpleasant atmosphere for everyone who gets near it or, or everyone who gets to hear what we're saying. So Paul tells us to get rid of this unwholesome talk. When we're speaking thoughtfully, how, how do we do that? We build each other up through our words. And how do we do that? By words of affirmation. You know, by encouraging one another, constructive criticism, words of appreciation. Now, it has to be truthful so that it has to be thoughtful, okay? Uh, we don't just make words so that that person will feel better. Of course, there are times when we have to say a constructive criticism, the truth, so that that person will be built up, so that person will improve in whatever area that we're trying to critique that person. But we have to do this to build each other up. And when there's an, an awesome talk, there's corrupt, there's insipid, there's worthless, you know, such as gossip or slander. And it includes foul talk, such as coarse language. And such speech is worthless. We don't spread worthlessness, don't we? And we don't want to hear people hearing worthless things. Not only should our speech be kept clean and truthful, but we should also speak only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. So the first application is, before we even mention our words in the first verse, is this true? In this point is that, is this going to help somebody? Will this build somebody up? Now speaking about uh, speaking thoughtfully, once an old man spread rumors that his neighbor was a thief, as a result, the young man was arrested. Days after the young man was proven innocent, after being released, he sued the old man for wrongly accusing him. You know, slander, I think that's the, that's the case here. In the court, the old man told the judge, they were just comments. In other words, they were just words. Did not harm anyone. The judge told the man, write the things you said about him on a piece of paper. Cut them up and on the way home, throw the pieces of paper out. Tomorrow, come back to hear the judgment. Next day, go out and gather all the pieces of the paper, but you throw out yesterday. So the old man said, I can't do that. The wind spread them and I won't know where to find them. The judge then replied, the same way, Simple comments may destroy the honor of a man to such an extent that the one is not able to fix it. If you can't speak well of someone, rather don't say anything. Let's all be masters of our mouths, which James has, you know, always exhorted, so that we won't be slaves of our words. Let us speak thoughtfully because if we don't, we may say things that we will affect other people that it will be so hard for them to recover. Survey says that every negative comment we made, we followed up with three positive comments. 
In other words, you see the impact of any negative or anything that is not, you know, edifying. Uh, we have to counter it with three edif or positive comments. So that's it. We speak truthfully, we speak thoughtfully, and finally, we speak tactfully. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 3 to 4, But among you there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality, or of any kind of impurity, or of greed, because of these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should be their obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. Now, now, interestingly, the word obscenity is an extremely offensive word or expression. Speaking tactfully is saying the right words at the right time. Now, that's speaking tactfully. In other words, when we're tactless, we're not speaking the words at the right time and we're not using the right words at the right in, or the proper time. Foolish talk or coarse joking are often foolish because they are out of place and improper for God's holy people. We are reminded that these are improper for God's holy people. So, well, again, he also mentioned that word uh, foolish talk or silly talk. The term is used by non-biblical writers for silly talk in general, such as might come from a mouth of the one who is weak of intellect or even intoxicated. You know, we are Christians and we don't want to use those words, uh, those, those silly talk. And course, joking, you know, this is very common to young people, or even in the adult world, uh, even the Christians, unfortunately, we, we tend to laugh about this. These are indecent or vulgar, jesting, improper jokes. By the days of the New Testament, it was used to refer to indecent or off-color jokes. It is basically joking that is dirty, obscene, sexual, or uses foul language. Basically, the same things that are forbidden in regular speech, it is saying not to be there, not to be here. So don't resort to the humor of the world. You know, that's very common today. And make fun of the weak, helpless, hurting, and also don't resort to worldly, sexual, or dirty humor. You know, if you watch movies nowadays, it's just filled with those humors. It's filled with those obscene words, words that are improper for God's holy people. And we have to be very careful of who or what we listen or uh, and what we, we look at in the media because it tends to, you know, corrupt our hearts. And when our hearts are corrupted, those words will come out eventually. See, the opposite, as I mentioned, of being tactful is being tactless. Now, when we're tactless, having or showing a lack of sensitivity in dealing with others or with difficult issues. An unwholesome language should be as repulsive to us as a rotten apple or a spoiled piece of meat. So before we even open our mouths, before we even you know, comment on something, we have to ask ourselves, is it proper? Is it necessary? So three application here. And I think this, this is not just about watching our words because there's a voice, there's a, a platform right now in the social media that before we post anything, before we say anything in the social media, we should also be careful. We should ask these three questions so that we could speak truthfully, thoughtfully and tactfully first is it true what i'm going to share what i'm before i open my mouth before i type this in my computer or in my in in my you know in my phone is it true before i share this is it true second is would this benefit is this beneficial for those people who's going to hear it for those people who's going to read it okay will this build them up or will this torn them apart okay and then, is it proper as a Christian, as a followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, will this be proper for me to say? Will this be proper for me to share? Now, whatever the Lord is impressing in your heart to do as a response to His Word this day, I, I believe that all of us have been, uh, we have fallen short of our mouths. We have said things that we don't mean. We have said things that are unkind, that are harsh, that are not proper. Maybe today, you need to apologize to somebody. You need to seek forgiveness to God first and then to the person that maybe have been hurt by the things that you have said. And maybe for some of you here, God is impressing into our hearts whom can we build up with our words. There are people in our lives today 
that we can't encourage by telling them the truth, by by admonishing to them the truth of the Word of God. And I don't know about you, maybe for some of you there's need to be repentance. Repentance because we have told a lie. Repentance because there were times that we may probably have not said those foul language, but we have agreed to the uh, sexually, you know, uh, immoral jokes that we have heard. And probably we have to repent because there were times in our lives when we have said words that are very improper to God's holy people. I don't know what it is, but we are reminded today that we have to watch our words. You see, as I look into our political world, the country that we're living in, it seems like offensive language, foul language has been quote-unquote acceptable because of our leaders, because of the, those people who are in the line of authority. But we are different. We are God's children, and we are followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Paul admonished us in Ephesians chapter 4 and Ephesians chapter four, 5 that we are to imitate God because we no longer be part of this world. We have been renewed and we should live out our true identity. And we can know that we are followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. People will know that we are followers of the Lord Jesus Christ by simply listening to what we say. So friends, watch your words. And if you do that, many people will be blessed by you. May you have a blessed day today.